What does it mean to breathe? This narrative that is bigger than the force field of violence. Breathing is not universal. Once we realize that law must respond to matter, this is what metaphorical method is best able to speak to. Radioactive colonialism permeates all of these scales and matters, cellular through to the planetary. You know, these rights are often articulated in the abstract. For law and policy making, it is a convenient fiction to believe that we know when breathing starts and when it ends, or that something like a single breath even exists. But phenomena like global warming, toxic waste, nuclear radiation and global pandemics expose over and over again that breathing is entangled. Current legal systems cannot address this fact. The Lubisha Fantasy Lab is a research agency which brings together researchers from across disciplines and fields of knowledge production. Through its metaphorical investigations, the lab develops new ways of attending to injustices in their specific legal, scientific, and political entanglements. Metaphorics takes seriously that in order to understand what matters and what is precluded from mattering, we have to attend to chemical as well as social processes, to geological and to legal histories, to political and physical states. The gas exchanges and the right to breathe investigation is a metaphorical case study into the entanglements that either make possible or prohibit breathing. It demonstrates that the right to breathe can neither be built on a universal idea of what breathing means, nor on an understanding of law as detached from matter. Now, there simply is no right to breathe. Law is not something that's immaterial. Um, it combines with the temperature in the atmosphere and it, you know, it swirls along with all the other smoke and smog and dust and aerosols that are in the atmosphere. Air is not one, it, it's multiple. So when we think about constructing something like a right to breathe, this research does show that breathing is not universal. We know that radiation and the way it moves in the wind and in our atmosphere and its half-lives obey no geographical borders or thinkable timescales. We have to ask whether law can attend to these different forms of existence and how the scales of nuclear colonialism render life livable or unlivable. Being, breathing, and knowing um, are entangled. The challenge for me was that law does not register different pressures that act upon different bodies. So you have race and racism that constantly intra-act with the entanglement of pressures. And no body is independent for these, from these pressures. So for Black bodies like Barbara Dawson and George Floyd, you have the medical and societal pressures that are acting on their bodies because of race and because of systemic racism. So a way for me to understand this force field of violence uh, coherently and concretely was by asking how can we understand the relationship between law and force while also um, looking at matter and meaning together. I think the metaphorical method was really important for my project. It helped me really break down multiple entanglements that are in within this apparatus of police violence. So for example, the breakdown of physical and social forces, lethal bodily reactions and objective reasonableness. You know, attending to the fact that when we think about rights and we think about law, you know, these rights are often articulated in the abstract and divorced from the actual mechanical processes that are taking place. And it's important then to make whatever laws that we have physically and materially rigorous, because so long as breathing exists only in the abstract, you can't defend it and you can't protect it. There are violences that are ongoing which are not being discussed. I mean, there are protections in prisons against indoor smoking, protections against secondhand smoke, and there are no protections for 
a potentially deadly virus like COVID. Using um, a metaphorical approach shows the absences that carry down and now are reflected as well um, in absences in legal practice. That's the difficulty in addressing these questions and addressing the legal framework and scientific framework is how do you present a rigorous argument for something that cannot be described right now, but also thinking of how it can attend to questions that are not articulated yet, are not formed yet, cannot be represented yet. And it's been very fruitful to collaborate. And I think ultimately has really, it's been a style of research that I had been unfamiliar with before. And I think ultimately is, is, is what I believe to sort of be a way that I want to operate and continue to work in the future.